So for those wanting faster wireless charging on your iPhone 17, we have news that these new phones should support Qi 2.2, which allows for 50 watt wireless charging. We have new MagSafe chargers filed in a database, and they look like the existing chargers for the most part, with the same general design, but these do support Qi 2.2, which is a massive upgrade over the current Qi 2 standards, which maxes out at 15 watts. And so 50 watts is gonna make MagSafe much faster. And if you're wondering about heat, that hopefully should not be a huge issue. Wireless charging technology has improved over the years. And so yes, I'm pretty happy about this upgrade. But not everything is sunshine and rainbows with iPhone 17, because if you were excited for the anti-reflective coating, Apparently that's been cancelled. So Leica Instant Digital had earlier told us that similar to the Galaxy S24 and S25 Ultra, the iPhone 17 Pro could use an anti-reflective display, which would make the display much more visible when outdoors in direct sunlight. That would have been great. However, it seems Apple ran into problems scaling up the display coating process. Adding this coating to the millions of devices Apple produces would have taken longer than expected. And so obviously Apple wants to prioritize efficiency of production. And so as a result, it's been canceled. The new display coating was also supposed to be more scratch resistant. And so it seems Apple's now gonna stick to the new version of ceramic shields that was introduced with the iPhone 16 series. Don't expect any sort of glass improvements with the iPhone 17. Now I know for those who use a screen protector, the anti-reflective coating wouldn't have made a difference, but there are those who don't use a screen protector and so this would have been a cool upgrade regardless. And so I am disappointed this is not coming to iPhone 17. But now let's move on to more positive news because we have great news people because there are new dye models from Sonny Dixon showing us the iPhone 17 is almost as thin as its buttons. That's crazy. So previously Unbox Therapy showcased a CAD model of the phone and we saw how substantially thinner this device was. But in Sonny Dixon's leak we can see the air being compared to the rest of the range. The air is rumored to be 5.5 millimeters in thickness whereas the 17 Pro should be 8.725 millimeters in thickness. And yes, after the iPhone 6, you may be concerned about this bending, but apparently Apple is going to use a mix of aluminum titanium for the chassis to prevent this. And this is the first time we're hearing about this because previous rumors had only stated this device would be made of aluminum. But honestly, the iPhone 6 was a one-off disaster. The M4 iPad Pro is actually even thinner than the rumored iPhone 17 Air, and yet they improved the structural integrity of that device. And so I have faith that Apple can do the same with the 17 Air as well. Apple also went with a 6.6 .6 inch display to prevent it from bending, since the original plan was to make this as big as the Pro Max. Also what's crazy is that despite its thinness, Apple has managed to fit in camera control, though as rumored this won't have a SIM card slot and will be eSIM only globally. People may also be worried about battery life because of how thin this iPhone is, but not to worry because we have heard about Apple using a higher density battery in this iPhone. Now it makes sense to use this technology with a device that's naturally gonna have space constraints because it'll be so thin, and so high density battery allows a lot of energy to be stored within a small physical space, allowing Apple to possibly fit in a fourth 1400 million power battery in this iPhone, which won't be too bad considering the Plus right now has a 4674 million power cell. This combined with the fact we should see the very efficient C1 means battery life should still be solid on the air in my opinion, so there shouldn't be too many compromises because of its thinness. Really the main omission will be the lack of an ultra wide or telephoto, but that main sensor should still be the same 40 megapixel lens found on the Pro models, and they've gone with one lens to keep as thin as possible and also preserve space for the battery, which I think is a good move. You know what else would be a good move? You clicking that subscribe button. It's free and would bring you the latest of Apple right to subscription box, so please consider it. Join the Saran Bike gang now. Anyway, let's talk about groundbreaking changes coming to the Pro models because we have news about a new color but it's not just any color because the Sierra Blue 13 Pro has been reborn people. We have news that we could see a new sky blue color option on iPhone 17 Pro and this gets me tingling. So previously John Prosser told us he had seen a silver black and white iPhone 17 Pro and I was pretty disappointed by this news because with Apple switching to aluminium with the iPhone 17 Pro, I thought we could see more exciting colors with the Pro models and silver, black and white are not exciting. However, we now have a leak from Majin Buu telling us the sky blue shade we saw with the MacBook Air 4 
may also come to the iPhone. And while if you mock this up, it looks eerily similar to the Sierra Blue iPhone 13 Pro. Majumbi does tell us it'll be a more refined version of that shades. Whatever that means, how exactly can you refine a color? I have no idea, but he does say it'll be a brighter shades, which I hope is the case because it shouldn't look gray in most lighting conditions. But honestly, as much as I do love Sierra Blue, I do hope we see more saturated finishes as well, similar to the colors we get in the regular models. Majumbu does tell us Apple's testing other colors and nothing has been finalized, so we shall wait and see what Apple ends up doing. Imagine something as punchy as Ultramarine on the Pro models, that would be great. If you're hoping to see faster charging iPhones, we have news that won't be the case with iPhone 17. Analyst Jeff Poo tells us the complete iPhone 17 range will support 35 watt wide charging, which is about the same as the iPhone 16 series. I know some may be bummed out by this considering many Android phones support 50 watt charging, but honestly I'm not too annoyed by this. I'd much rather Apple give us larger batteries than improve the endurance and make these phones last longer, in which case you would only have to charge overnight anyway. And thankfully that's what we've heard from other leakers. The Air and the Pro Max at the very least should get battery upgrades, but I'm assuming it will apply to the whole range. Now let's move on to the camera. So according to John Prosser, Apple will introduce a new feature where you can record from the front facing and rear facing camera at the same time. I say new in quotations because I'm pretty sure you could do this on the Galaxy S4, a phone from 2013. It's nice to see that Apple's finally catching up with the competition, but what's funny is apparently this simple feature is going to be a Pro exclusive. I understand they want to tout the Pro phones more as a content creation machine, and a feature like this is most useful for creatives, but it's also something the base model should easily be able to do. So I really hope they don't software lock this to the Pro models. By the way, I am aware third party applications like Snapchat already allow you to do this but natively offering this would be great too and as i said it is about time next let's talk about the telephoto on iphone 17 pro so for those unaware we have heard a lot about a new 40 megapixel telephoto lens coming to this year's pro models this was the last lens still on 12 megapixels as the main camera had moved to 14 megapixels with the 14 pro and the ultra wide had moved to 14 megapixels with the 16 pro now with the telephoto switching to 14 megapixels apple plans to apparently offer 3.5x optical zoom instead of the 5x currently offered on the 15 and 16 Pro Max. You may think this sounds like a downgrade, but 3.5x optical zoom is equivalent to 85 millimeters, which is better suited for portraits, and that's what most use a telephoto for in the first place. Also, do remember, like the main 40 megapixel sensor with its 2x digital crop, having a higher resolution telephoto means digital zoom is going to get a lot better, and so you can still zoom in and get high resolution photos with this new 17 Pro. You also get a max 25x digital zoom with the 16 Pro Max, so maybe expect this to be 30 or 40x with the 17 Pro Max, whilst offering higher quality photos at those higher zoom levels. Now let's dive into new cases showing us the ginormous camera module on the 17 Pro. These case leaks come courtesy of Sonny Dixon, who's a pretty credible source, and the cases themselves aren't very exciting, they're just regular clay cases that have MagSafe, However, you can see there is a cutout that spans the entire width of the device, but that's going to encompass the familiar triple lens camera on the left, but the LiDAR scan and mic and flash will now move to the right sides. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this, and thank you for watching.